just rings. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, God rains. Hallelujah, He rains, He rains. Hallelujah, He rains, He rains. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can, can you lift your hands above your heads? If you can, lift your hands above your heads and honor him. If you are sitting down, can you be on your feet one minute? Break it down. Break it down. Break it down. Ah, oh, yeah, like that. Can I hear you thunder in tongues right, right away? Can you thunder in tongues? Branke ziga lagada. Eke sa shalabado. Yahweh shabao. Yahweh shabao. Oh Lord my God. The King of glory. Yahweh Shabbat Yahweh Shabbat O Lord our God The King of Glory ah! Yahweh Shabbat Yahweh Shabbat we have not gathered unto man. We have gathered unto a king. And no one comes to a king and go without a gift. No one comes before a king and go without a reward. Unto you shall the gathering of your people be. And thereafter we have gathered before you. Do to us as that our heart desires grant us access to the secrets of the kingdom grant us access to the mysteries of the kingdom your word heals. your word sanctifies your word builds let this be our manifestation in the name of god the father and of the son and of the holy ghost put your hands together for jesus may be seated god bless you Hold your mic. Please, if you, if you are sitting beside a child, ensure that you are maximum and maximally in control of the kids. This is our CCG, not Norway now. So let order prevail. I take away your rights for order now. If I hear a child, what I want to say, is not written in my notes. I need to download them as I'm going, as we journey. You know, as the flight is going small, small, at a point, it looks like you are falling. At a point, it looks like you are stable. At a point, it looks like you are shaking again. This is how we go. The more you go, the rougher and tougher it goes. Please, I want to hear only the mystery. They want to leave me alone, my brother. Why? Why? Because of the weight of what I want to cheer. I had, God gave me a song for I can melt it a little bit. Precious promise God has given to the weary passerby from the way from earth to heaven I will guide thee with my eye I will guide thee I will guide thee I will guide thee with my eye. 
Run away from earth to heaven. I will guide thee with my eye when temptations all have come to to take the promise let this promise ring within you i will guide thee with my eye i will guide thee i will guide thee I will guide thee with my eye from the way from earth to heaven. I will guide thee with my eye. In Hebrews 9 and verse 27, the Bible said, It is appointed unto man once to die. So, in case you don't know, one day you will die. Maybe it's not in your plan. Maybe you are forgotten by the cares of life. My brother said while on Sunday school, one day we will leave this earth. And what I want to share is what will happen when we leave the earth. Eternal reward for kingdom soldiers. <laughs> We were dealing a series on kingdom soldiers. The first time I told you that I, we did the mentality of the kingdom soldiers. The second time we did the goal of the kingdom soldiers. Today, we will look at the eternal reward for kingdom soldiers. You know those days uh, we used to play under the canopy in Nigeria. And mostly on burial. On burial. There is this song. They usually sing. Say, walking away like the stars of the morning. Looking in the sea like the pillows roll. It's a touch, shall it be from on the earth and it's calling. Only remember by what we have done. Only remember. Kai. Only remember, only remember by what we have done. Thus we shall pass from the earth and its toiling. Only remember by what we have done. Okay, let's begin a journey now. When we are dealing on the mentality of kingdom soldiers, I gave us the characteristics of a kingdom soldier. And I said, a kingdom soldier, according to Paul, to Timothy, is one who is, has the capacity to endure. To a soldier, is not given not to suffer. To a soldier, the name alone, sans suffering, inscribed. But the training he receives is the one that can make him endure. And the whole scripture is surrounded by that witness. And what is that? Say, he that endureth to the end. The Bible says, the same shall be saved. What happens now? On salvation... All of us are equal. In eternity, we can be equal. You didn't hear that. Listen, on salvation, we didn't do anything. We received the life of Christ. And that is a point to assess the two judgment seats. In Revelation 20 and verse 11, John said, I saw a great white throne. Two judgments. Listen. What will bring you to this judgment is salvation. So everyone who has come to salvation will get there. So all of us, if you have been born again, if you, have, if you are a believer, surely you will come to the white throne judgment and you will pass. 
But there is one in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10. Get that scripture. That one is called the judgment seat of Christ. At that judgment is where we will receive reward. Listen, we were saved by grace. Then we have to walk by grace. So our reward is what we have done with grace. Yes, I forget. I told you that today we'll be doing a, a, a consensus regarding our weekly activities. Why you, I don't forget, I'm a teacher, I don't forget. Why you don't, some of us don't attend, right? Okay, because my pastor got the same vision with me, we didn't discuss. And he's on that series. So I will pause. Let him finish the series. When he's done and I don't see improvement, then I will come back with that consensus. So I will discuss. The Bible said I will give you pastors who will feed you. If we don't see you, we can't feed you. He didn't hear that. If we don't see you on Tuesday, we don't see you on Thursday, if we don't see you on Sunday, who will you feed? Cheers. We can't feed anybody. If I come here, let you, if you like, let me carry the whole anointing on the world and I see empty chairs, I can't do anything. I can't do anything. I need you and you need me. So we can build ourselves together. Let's go back to the series now. Now we are saying that the two judgments will meet. And it is death that will define it. Eternity is a life that elapses after death. Listen, do you know what my brother said? I have one day pondered, I asked myself. So of all my certificates now, when I die, it's useless. One day I was telling somebody, have you known that the bank in Norway has no nest of kin? He said he hasn't checked. I said, don't worry, don't need to check. I opened my own and showed him. He said, when you are filling that form, there is nothing like a nest of cane. He said, if you are married, though, give your wife the pin and the bank ID. Less in case you go to bed, I don't wake up. It's a joke, but it's free. Listen, bear it in mind that one day we will live here. That is my attention now. When we live here, what will be the reward? All of us can be equal in eternity. Oh. <laughs> the way you are sitting now, I'm talking. The way we come to here and so people are making laws for us is the way it is in the kingdom. I will show you the rewards and you will know where you belong to while on time. Now you have time. Now you have life. Prepare your own reward for yourself. Listen, there are two things you know about God. In Hebrews 11 and verse 6, I want to teach, but the atmosphere is at hand. I need to preach. The Bible said something about God. Number one is that God is a rewarder. God is what? A rewarder. In 2 Timothy 4 and verse 8, Paul called God a righteous judge. So God is two things now. One, a rewarder. Two, God is a righteous judge. That means he will judge us and he will give us reward. In Revelation 22 and verse 12, he said, Behold, I come quickly. He said, and my reward is with me. To do what? To give to every man according. That means God will reward us. Number two, he will give us a Accordant, I like that word. According, head by head, not after my father. It is you and you on your own. He will give us reward. Now let's begin. What is reward? Let's define some terms. Please pick a biro and write. Or your tablet and write. A reward is a benefit. A reward is a benefit. Or compensation. A reward is a benefit or compensation given in recognition of one's effort. Mark the lines I'm reading now. A reward is a benefit or compensation given in recognition of one's effort. One, service. Two, achievement. Or good behavior. 
Then I add my own. Note, reward is for good and bad behavior and action. Because the Bible says he will give according as your work. Whether you are working or not, something there for you. If you want to be a believer, I told you, we transcend from salvation. We move to transformation. From there, we move to witness. That is our calling. In Acts 1 8, it said, You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes. When you're already a believer, you come to witness. That's when the Holy Ghost comes. While He comes, it's for you to bear witness. For you to be as a point of believer, you're a baby. Do you know what it means to be a, a witness? Is a matuya, mataya. Someone who can die for what he believes. Just imagine now, somebody walking here and said, Deny Christ and die and go out and go out. How many will remain here? To see you how much we love the world and the things of the world. Is men walking here now with knife and gun and said, Deny Christ and go. Including me, who will remain here? That's when you will discover, Kai, I have a good car, I bought this day. I cook good soup. I have a good dress I need to wear. I have children I need to take care of. After all, let me just deny now and repent tomorrow. Because God is merciful. How can the disciples be tempted and they are happy that they suffered for Christ? You know, while I was small, there was this baby Christian I used to get in the church then. You receive it, um, it's good though. But if that is what we do every year, year in, year out, you shall prosper. That is not what the Bible is teaching us. The scripture is a call for activity. Is a call for service. He said to them that endure it to them. What do we endure? I will show you. It's heavy. It's a, he it's a heavy molecule here. Look at this. What is the reward of eternity? The reward of eternity or eternal reward is the blessings. Reward of eternity or eternal reward is blessings and the promises granted to believers based on their faith, actions, and relationship with God. One more time I take it. The rewards of eternity or eternal reward is the blessings and promises granted to believers based on their faith, actions, and relationship with God. Note that human beings are beings of motivation. We are highly motivated by reward. In case in your job now, your boss said, I will add you 10 corona. Or 100 corona per hour. You will see that there is a hormone that will start smiling on, inside you. You start smiling. Even without being, you don't have to be knowing, you will start smiling. You give a smile to it. That smile alone is an excitement. So you can choose to do more so you can get more. Now let's begin the journey now. What does God reward? What are the basis for getting a reward after this earth? After life? Remember, it's what we do now that will determine what you get in eternity. So, what will God, or what does God reward? Number one. Let's begin the journey. Number one, sorry for my voice. The, the, now, uh, now, I'm in, now I'm in Norway. <laughs> now I know, you know, the system has actually caught me. Number one is diligent pursuit. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. He said, and God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What does it mean to seek God? What does it mean? Number one is the heart posture. You don't seek with your face to God. You seek God with heart. In Jeremiah 17, God said to, to, to Samuel, he said, I, the Lord, I searches the heart. That is why the Bible said, if you serve the Lord with all thy heart, all thy soul. That all appeared in all these three components. Check the Bible very well. I thought they would put one all and put all the components. No. All of them has all. All heart, all soul, and all mind. Check the scripture. To tell you the, the, the depth 
of these three components when it comes to God. So when you are giving, you can give and not get a reward. You can pray without getting a reward. You can serve here without getting a reward. The problem is your heart posture. Why are you doing it? Are you being forced to do it? Do you know coming to fellowship has a reward? You don't know. That is why you can come once in a month. That's why you come as you like. That is why coming to church is when you are free. How can a human being come to church when they are free? So all your calendar is occupied with work. It is only when you don't have work. Bible said, Bible said, I saw books open. <laughs> books are open. You have not been taught, I will tell you. There is a reward in coming to church. I told the woman that won't employ me. She said, on Sunday, I said, if you try it. Said, if you touch Sunday, <laughs> touch my activities with God. I don't have life. It's when I have life first, I can now walk. <laughs> you don't get it. We put the money first before. If you die, that work will still continue. Ah. 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 Second to that pursuit is the motive. Bible said, when you bring a gift and you remember that you have quarrel with your brother, listen, some people have offended you and you are waiting for them to come and apologize to you. You don't need that, you know. Forget them. You, see, your life in eternity matters more than what you are doing here. Forget them. Those things are inconsequential. Forget them. Somebody said, you don't get angry. I said, I do. But I forgive before you offend me. Listen, I was born in church. I grew. See, I, I told God, I want to know you. Experientially. I don't want to preach you by hearsay. I want to preach you. That is why when I'm preaching, you can feel the tempo. Because I preach from my body. Listen, you don't need those things, so you don't need them. You must apologize. You don't need it. Forget them. When you die, nobody, scientists that claim they know everything have not given us what happened in eternity. They have never, they have never told us what happens in eternity until we get there. And it is only that is that gap between time, death, and eternity. One of the bases for a war is your pursuit of God. One in it is the heart posture. Number two is your motive of doing things you do. When you help people, do you help them to pay you back? Listen, if you do that, you already have your reward. When you see, Bible says, He that give it to the poor, lend it to God. They don't read scriptures. He that give it to the poor, lend it to God. You don't know. Then God will now be, ah, I'm owing this man. <laughs> Number two, we don't have time. Number two of basics for the world is faithfulness. Is faithfulness. Matthew 25, 14 to 30. A man had three servants. He gave them talent according to their abilities. And when he returned back, he said to them, Come, thou faithful servants. Now, to what extent are we being faithful? Every one of us here has a calling. Every part in this earth, you are not a mistake. There is something called called you to come and do on earth here. It is on that account of faithfulness that God will reward you. For example, my, my, my beloved evangelist, you have seen how he has taken his own purpose to the extent that 
All he wants to do is to make that worship known to God. Your own might be to give arms. Your own might be to serve, to encourage. When you speak to somebody, they are relieved. Do it, oh. He don't know. That is your reward, though. That is the basis of your reward. Faithfulness means being there at, as when due at all times, irrespective of the situation. Do what you are asked to do. That is faithfulness. You don't know. You are asked to sing. Like one day, my sister lost her sister, her, her sister and she came here and sang. While I was on the drum, God said, Call her and tell her, What kid her sister will not kill you? I didn't know what kid your sister, I didn't know. It was a letter I asked. And I said to her, what kid your sister will not kill you? That act of service. How can you sister die yesterday at the need of your thick mic and be singing? Do you know what thing to sing? You sing from a stream. And somebody could be able to sing. That is service. That is faithfulness to God. Listen. Listen. Don't joke with this, oh. This life has no duplicate. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> it's okay. Number three basis is righteous works. Righteous works. Hebrews 6 and verse 10. Look at the scripture. Hebrews 6 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Which you have shewed towards his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. Listen, Bible said he will give us reward according to our works. What is our work? One, fight the good fight of faith. Two, finish the race. Number three, keep the faith. These are the three predicaments. These are the three key. Our goal here. Our goal here is these three things. And you must be conscious of them. If not, you will lose that too. Hey, you don't know. Number four basics for a war is charity. Matthew 6, 3 and verse 4. Charity or acts of kindness. Acts of kindness. Now you are in a better place. It's not too better than where we come from, but it is a bit currency difference. We are that hundred kroner can make someone to tell you God bless you. Your acts of kindness. Are there people that when they pray, you are their prayer topic? Are there people like that? That when they pray, you, if God take you, they will, they will kill themselves. Do you know that a woman died in the Bible and Peter came? To Peter, <laughs> look at the clothes she bought for us. Look at the garment she did for us. Peter was moved. Not for them, but because of what the women around are saying. The testimonies after death. And Peter was so moved in the spirit. I said, No, they have to bring her back to life to continue her good works. How can some person die? Can somebody today boast of you? You don't need to be rich to be to give. You don't need to be rich to give. Sometimes when I want to do something, I will calculate how much. I will just think, try. If I send this money home, somebody will tell me, God bless you. My friend said, okay, you have to eat and be alive. I said, wait, wait, wait first. Somebody asked money yesterday. I think this one can do. Let's, let me divide it, you know. Let's divide. I will divide it. Send some. Act of kindness. This is what we are called upon. We are not creature. See, we are not being. We are not being. That. We don't just come here. Okay, have you ever think? Have you ever wondered? How you came here? How you got to your mother's womb? Why in Nigeria? Why in Norway? All these things are the ones that culminate to your thinking and existence. Okay, why am I a boy? Why am I a man? Why am I a girl? Sometimes in my room, I get crazy thinking. I'll be like, what will happen to me when I die? I'll be like, who will cry? <laughs> okay, who will be around me? 
Who will be with me? One day a boy asked me, brother, if somebody died, that cloth they used to put him, would they appear with it? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I have not died. <laughs> Do you know? I don't know. I don't know anything after life. But with scripture, I can tell you, that is my goal now. Number five. Four or five, right? Number what? Five. Capacity to endure persecution. Hey! Matthew 5, 10 and 12. Capacity to endure persecution. Jesus said, don't worry. When men persecute you for the sake of righteousness. He said, rejoice. He said, for, 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 for there shall be a reward for you. In case you have not grown to the point where you will be persecuted, don't worry. What we are talking about is not actually dying. It is self-denial. Bible said, if you desire to follow me, he said, pick up your cross. Deny yourself. Two key things. He said, pick up the cross. Then deny yourself and follow me. No. Deny yourself, then pick up your cross. How can you live a life? When the king saw me one day, he said, don't go down. No. I said, I don't have any other life. <laughs> you don't get it. I don't have life. The day I landed at the Kadamon airport, my leg touched the floor. He said, let's begin a journey. I heard it loud and clear. No one to pick me. Nobody to pick me. I was there, looking left. I looked right. I went to go back. The plane, I can't see the plane again. I said, I don't enter trouble. I had a crusade in Nigeria. Three days, crusade. Friday, I was there. We were there with my team. Saturday, you know, I like to walk. I like to walk. No, don't worry. I was at work and I was arrested by the police. They took me to the zone, zone nine, Omaha. He knows what I'm talking about. The man said, anything I say, you're right. I said, okay. He said, right, you were caught in where they were doing some drinks. Uh, they call it adulteration. I look at him, and then I finish work. I wrote, I was caught in our Pepsi shop, Savannah shop. Savannah, 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 Savannah. The man, you think you're smart. The man put me inside, say, as I enter. I didn't know where is where God said I should go and do the crusade. I never saw miracle, but then I saw it. As I enter. They say, do punishment. As I stand to do the Okada rider, a man showed up and said, leave him. He said, go to the back. Where I was sitting, I was sitting. If you see it, someone will rest on you. They say, rest on you. They say, rest on you. They call it last in corridor. Towards the evening, you have to come and do what we call testimony or witness. What brought you? As I came, I told them, I went to the parking store to get some drink. And they took me. The man said, leave them. Let they behave. He said, go back. I went back. After one minute, the man came and said, where is that young man? I came out. He said, come. I, didn't, I, I never knew they had VIP in the cell. And they have, and they have a ass of rock in the cell. I never knew. And the man came and said, come. He, hit, he slapped one boy. Power, get out. The boy went out. He said, sit here. I didn't say anything, no. I sat there, and I crossed my legs very well. And in the night, I begin. As I'm doing it, one guy said, bro, who are you? One guy joined me. This one joined me. Well, the man came and said, what is going on? And we begin. The cell was right. If you see heat, men that we are lost hope, they became alive again in hope. Yeah. I was here Saturday night, Sunday. Monday morning, my name was the first thing they called. As I was walking out, they were dragging me back. Sir, please don't leave us. I, I preached literally from day one to the last day. And men got to hope. I told them, here yeah, is not the end of life. From here, there is a man you need. And when you meet that man, he will come here and take you away. You know, at the age of 17, I came back from Zone 9. You know what I'm telling you? Zone 9, as I came back, I went, that was when I left my bed. 
one big bed. I say, child, freedom is good, though. Freedom is good. As I lay on that bed, when my friends came, say, man of God, I said, don't worry. I love the crusade. We will go back again. But my experience there is what kept me here now. Because when I see human beings, I know you need the word. You need this word. We can suffer it for Christ. We don't have time. I said this before. Let's live here. I have to live here so we can do the feast of the world. You think they have people, people are busy. Nobody's busy in Norway. They are not busy. They don't have not had time to hear the word. When I'll get to you in two hours, son, someone, let's discuss the scripture. You will not, you will leave that job. You think that job is your life. That job is something you are doing for the meantime. It was my my boss I was discussing with. <laughs> he said, bro, you are too you are too anointed to be here. I said, I know. That's why I'm managing it very soon. We are good the nation. <laughs> number number what? Seven, so winning. Listen, so winning. John 4 and verse 36. Let me show you a scripture. Why you should win a soul? So winning is a basis for getting a reward. It's a, and he that repent will receive wages and gather fruit unto life eternal. Both he that soweth and he that repent. Look at Daniel 12 and verse 30. It says, They that turn men unto righteousness. They that turn men unto righteousness. And they be wise shall that turn men unto what? Look at that scripture again. Mm. Give me First Corinthians three eighteen. First Corinthians three and verse eighteen. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in the world, let him become fool and be the and he be what wise. He that winneth soul is wise. He that winneth soul. Listen, even in the army. The person that receives an arm, they call hero or hero, is the one that goes for a fight and return alive. If you go and die, they, they, they call you, what do they call, call them again? A fallen hero, right? But if you succeed, your badge increases. The same in the kingdom. If I win so, you don't win so. We can't be the same in eternity. We can't be the same in eternity. Listen, we can't be the same. If you are winning so, I'm not winning so. We will both arrive there but in different dimension. What are the rewards? Let's start the message now. What are the rewards? Number one is glory. Ah! Oh! Glory. Listen, on earth, we wear clothes, right? If you're not putting on clothes, you can't come here. In as much as some people are going half now these days, and I have to go and buy goggle, black goggle, so I can cover my eyes. So when I'm walking, I walk straight. Listen, I never saw a scripture until a pastor read that scripture here last Sunday. Said I had a covenant with my eye. I went and did my own. I never I went and did covenant with my eye. So I bought cargo, black one. I don't used to wear it too, but I have to wear it now because what I'm seeing these days, if I continue seeing it, eketaya. If I enter the train, I close my eyes. I was fat. I sleep every time now. I had to, I had to sleep. If I'm winning the way, I go for so fast. Malabada, shalabada, lagada, legede. Aya, what is going on? What is going on? I thought Nigeria goes naked. I never knew. Some people are more than, more than us. Uh... In eternity, what we wear is glory. When we, when we get there, you are not shining. I will look at sister. What is happening? You are not shining, no. When Moses went there and came down from the mountain, the Bible said his face was shining. What brings you to the world of glory is your journey of intimacy with God. The same way you know your husband intimately is the way you are asked to know God intimately by prayer and through the word of God. It's on that ground that you can be able to obtain glory as a reward. We don't wear clothes there. What we wear is glory. And on that account, 
the basis to get glory is on intimacy and how depth you go in the word of God. Do you know that the word, reading it is, it has a reward. Do you know prayer has a reward? You don't know. That's why you don't pray. You only pray when there's problem. Prayer is beyond problem solving. Prayer is a relationship with God. Prayer is a tool for building. Prayer is a tool for maturity. Prayer is a tool of communication with God. Prayer is so many things, but the best of them is intimacy. Hey, sometimes I go to my room. My roommate is, in fact, I pity him sometimes because I want to scream. Sometimes the world will mantle me. Hey, I will hold him like Jacob. He will, he will mantle me, I will hold him. I cannot leave you. And when I'm done, I don't, I don't feel anything again. Whether, whether Corona or not, I don't care. One guy said, how can you sit all day hearing messages? I said, that is where my life is. <laughs> that is where my life is. I don't, that degree I'm getting will fade away. Fading away like the stars of the morning. Those cars will fade away. That mansion you build, <laughs> the day they will drag it when you, when you are gone. The day they will struggle with it. <laughs> That is when you will know that it is good to even give to the poor and have a reward waiting for you in eternity. <laughs> Glory to God, help us. Number two is to reign with Christ. Not all of us will reign with him. Oh. Hey, James 1, 2 Timothy 2.12. 2 Timothy 2.12, sorry. 2 Timothy 2.12. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. So if you don't suffer, if you dodge it, <laughs> what do you mean to suffer? Pastor call you, Sister Tayo, on Sunday you are singing, even though you are not available. Even though you, you are not available, even though, even though it's so difficult. One day, mommy said to me, can you take Bible study? I wasn't free actually. He said, give me. I have to rearranged my schedule made a plan and that was the day I have to deal with that subject but you know actually in the scripture, nothing like double anointing in the scripture <laughs> you know what Elijah received was the spirit of Elijah and that same spirit is what John came back with so that is why I have to tell you that we are all anointed. It is like a water. He said, out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. It is, you know, that the other way that has stirred his own. A man who goes 40 days, two times in a year, <laughs> has stirred <laughs> a good amount of water that can overflow. I went for 100 days last year, and I, I was going like this. <laughs> So, just imagine when you have stayed anointed on the sea, you are anointed. It's not by an, you also anointed, but you have not stayed your anointed to radiate. How, why do you buy makeup? Are you not beautiful? But you have to add that one to radiate. <laughs> so you add those words of God. You add prayer. You add fasting and add fellowship so that the anointing can glory. But because you are lazy, Hi, man of God is here. Oh, sa, sa, I think it's, oh, it's nice to honor. Sa, sa, and they will leave, nothing will happen. <laughs> because the vessel is empty. <laughs> are we together? Yes. Are, are, are you blessed? Yes. <laughs> I should continue. <laughs> Number three is the tree of life. The tree of life, or Bible call it the hidden manna. What is the basis? To get that one. Look at the scripture. Revelation 2. Give me 7 and 17. 7 then 17. 2, 7. Look at that. Say, he that has ear, let him hear. So this one, in order for those that have two ears, is for those that have what? An ear. <laughs> it's for you to be attentive. You can have two ears, yeah, you don't hear. Having an ear doesn't mean you can hear. <laughs> he said, what they said, to him that overcometh, he said, will I give to eat of the tree of life? 
Where is it? In the midst of the paradise of God. 17, sir. Oh, yeah. He that has an ear, let him hear. He said to, he said, to him that will come at, I will give the hidden manna. Do you know what he mean? It's for those that obey God. John 14, 12. How much you can obey God's commandment is what gives you access to the throne room. There is a place called throne room. Oh. You don't, don't, don't allow someone to tell you about God in heaven. You tell, Pastor Anthony, where is God? I say, we are not worshiping God though. Raise your hand up. <laughs> you are in heaven yet. You, don't, you are not there. You are in heaven, but yet you are still outside yourself. It's in eternity I will talk about here. It will happen. It will surely happen. Have you ever asked yourself, when we die, where do we go? Everybody can talk about life. Even the scientists, they don't know anything about death after death. One day I was moving about the, about the cemetery here. I was seeing graves. I said, so you are a human being that lived one day. So one day now, they will carry me in and put here. And four, right? Number four is new name. It's what? A new name. <laughs> Do you know when Jesus finished his own race, God gave him a name. Philippians 2. Do you know? Why did he give him a name? That name is what you are known for in here. Why does the, the angel has name? Gabriel means something. And Gabriel doesn't mean angel. Gabriel, you know. It means something. And Jamaica, they, mean, they have meaning. He said, I am Gabriel. When he came to Zachariah, he said, I am Gabriel. <laughs> he said, you doubt me what I said? He said, you go, you go dumb. <laughs> you go dumb. You go dumb. Say, I am Gabriel. Do you know what Gabriel means? Solomon is not Solomon, no. That one is nomenclature. There is a name when you come there. That name on the base is how much you are able to fulfill your mission on earth. That's your purpose. See, Paul has to change to Saul, has to change to Paul to him to finish his mission. Jesus changed the name of his disciples. Are you not aware? Peter was changed to Cephas. And all the rest were changed to James and John to Son of Thunder. Why? Because names is what define who you after eternity. Look at the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 17. He said, and I will give him a, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving me that is made it. Give me 3 and verse 12. 3 and verse 12. We are, we are done. 3 and verse 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God. And the name of the city of my God, which is Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven and from God, I will write upon him my new name. This basis to get this new name is you becoming an overcomer. When you overcome, a name is given. Two more we go. Number six is, or five is what? Is throne. Throne. Matthew 9, 19 and 28. Peter said to Jesus, we have left everything and followed you. What shall be our reward? He said, you shall sit with me on 12th throne, on throne, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. There are thrones. There are thrones when we get their eternity. And it is on the premise of service that you can get a throne. Come to church, you know. It's only when you are free. Only when you are free, when you have time. To, to go. One day I was... I think I said, if I'm God, now how will I judge people? So somebody come to me when he has time. <laughs> Even as human being, if someone calls you only when he has problem, you don't give them attention. Because there is no cordiality between there. Oh, you only call me only when you have problem. So I am now a solver, right? You don't give attention. But when the person calls you every day, talk with you, you can be led to give something out. So if you are God, judge yourself now. The last, we pray, is crown. I like this one. <laughs> yeah. Is crown. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand in his strength alone. Stand in his royal banner. 
This must not suffer lost from victory unto victory. His army shall hear till everyone is walk with. His must not lost. Give me four. Give me four. Give me four. Give me four. He said, Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand in his strength alone. Say, the arm of flesh we fail you. Yet they are not lost your own. Hey, yeah! Put on the gospel armor. Mm. And watching on to prayer. We are duty cause of danger. Be ne never wanting there. Go ahead, sir. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. The strife will not be, it will not be long. Mm. This day, the noise of battle, the net, the feet of song. Hey, hey, to him that overcometh. Oh! Hey, 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 Go back to him that overcome it. A crown of life shall be, shall be, shall be, shall. In 2 Timothy 4 and verse 7, Paul said, I have finished my race. He said, I have kept the faith. He said, the arm now remains for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord shall give me. So not only for me, but to all that overcome it shall we rise.